Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach podcast, episode number 146, and I hope you guys are having a great summer. Today, we're going to be talking all about Microsoft 365 and how you can use it as a tech coach, how you can use it as an educator, and you know what? How you can use it at home to keep yourself organized. With me, as always, is my good friend, Sue Vincents from techimaginations.net. Sue, how are you today? Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach. I am great. Great to be back. Great to be recording here with you tonight. And um, we're here in the thick of summer. And as we record, I'm enjoying a little bit of a staycation from my job at school. So it's been um, a great kind of restful week. It certainly has been a good summer so far. I just got done doing my second graduate class on my way to my doctoral program here. Uh, We just got done doing our finance course. It was a one week intensive, eight hours a day. Oh my goodness, my butt hurt at the end of every single day, but I loved it. Uh, So those keeping score at home, that's two grad classes to go. (laughs) 60 some more credits to go before I get the doctorate. And uh, guys, Thank you for being with me all the way. And you know what, Sue? I made a decision last year that I'm still excited that I made. And it's one that has to do with teacher cast. It's one that has to do with my schooling. It's one that has to do with my grad school. And today we're here to talk about Microsoft 365. I... Got to tell you, I've um, been a Microsoft person for a long time, longer than I've been doing TeacherCast. Built my first Windows PC back when I was <laughs> years old. And, you know, using these products, seeing what's out there, they recently announced uh, the new, you know, the brand new Windows 11. I'm excited to test that out and try that. But last year, Sue, I made the decision to move TeacherCast from Google into a Microsoft 365. I actually purchased a Microsoft 365 small business plan, uh, put myself into Google, uh, or I should say from Google into Microsoft, built everything on Teams. And I use that for a variety of reasons, not just to learn it so I can teach it to my school district, but also to help get me organized, uh, help my family get organized. And now I'm using it to get my grad school organized. Wow. So, you know, you made this decision to change over and, you know, I followed along with you. So I've learned a lot along the way because I was more experienced in Google. What really made you make that final decision? Because you're a Google person, too. So what made you go ahead into Microsoft? I am a Google person. Um, You know, in my previous school district, I used to hate that they even referred to me as like Mr. Google. I hate that term. But that's that I was brought in to move a school district into Google. Um, Now I was brought in as an instructional learning coach to move my district into Microsoft. Um, I made the decision, like I said, because I wanted to learn. And I, I realized very quickly that it's a lot to, lo- to look at. It's a lot to handle. But if you take it in chunks, it's there. I, I have this philosophy. And guys out there, if you're listening, let me know if this makes any sense. Um, Google Apps, right? Google Apps, meaning many apps of Google. You Google Docs, Google Sheets, Slides, all that good stuff, right? Um, and if you look at Docs, it kind of is its own application. If you look at Sheets, it's kind of its own application. Now, I know that over the last little bit, they've added the bar on the left or on the right side with the different things. And I you know there's some crossovers now that they're starting to get into. But for the most part, these are singular applications that just happen to have the same waffle bar, if you will. Microsoft, I started looking at differently, you know, Microsoft 365 or Office 365, as it used to be called. I started to look at these applications as if it was one 
platform, right? Word, for instance, um, is the same engine or has the same engine backend that OneNote does. And Word and OneNote have the same written engine as Outlook does. And if you can start to realize that all these applications basically have the same core, then you realize that Office is, you know, you can say it's Word and PowerPoint and Excel and all this other stuff, right? But, but really, it's one application. I mean, they've even got it down now where you can take a Word doc and export it to PowerPoint, and PowerPoint will automatically find your, set of, your headings and your subheadings and make the slides for you. Wow, I had no idea that happened. That's exactly. Great. And so you can also take a Word doc and automatically export it to a Sway website. You can automatically make your PowerPoint translate into dozens. I think it's either 60 or 106. I don't know. I never remember the number, but dozens of languages in real time. Google can't do that. Right. So let me ask you this, this process of being able to move a Word document to a PowerPoint or to a Sway, is that done with extra add-ons or does that just happen? It just happens. It's a, it's a feature now that's in. There's no Chrome extensions needed. Nobody else has code. It's now in there. And I love it. You know, it's one of the carrots, if you will, that I'm using at school to help bring people over to the purple side and, and get them into Microsoft education is, oh, look, it's not that Google's bad. We like Google, but this is where you want your students to be going. And so I, you know, there's a few things in here that I've been really getting into. And again, um, once I started organizing myself into Microsoft Teams, um, which we can certainly get into today, it was a game changer for the way that I run TeacherCast, for the way that I run my house, and even for the way that I'm organizing my doctoral program. Yes, I've certainly learned a lot over this year since uh, Jeff has moved everything and we collaborate on our episode plans inside of Microsoft Teams. Like I keep saying, I'm more experienced with Google. It's been a few years since I've been immersed in Microsoft. So give us a little comparison and contrasting session. session. We have Microsoft Teams and then over on Google, we have Google Docs, Google Classroom, where where can we compare and contrast here? Sure, and, and that's a fair thing. I, I, I do this often when I'm teaching my school district. If you look at the Google side, um, you have my drive. And my drive is the I own, I create, I'm the, the editor of. Um, I can share it with you, but if I delete it, it's gone for you. I, 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 I own. Um, on top of that, we have team drives. We own. The organization owns. It is up there. Anybody can look at it. But um, if I happen to leave the district, it still lives on. So, um, if you look on the Microsoft side, you have Microsoft OneNote, which is the personal. I create the file. I own it. I share it. I, I all of I, me, I. Um, and in addition to that, you have SharePoint. SharePoint is the organizational basis of this. Uh, the organization owns, we own, we collaborate. And, and if you can wrap your minds around the fact that all we're doing is talking about hard drives, I think it gets easier because you're no longer talking about PowerPoints and words and, and you know sheets and slides. It's, you're just talking about hard drives. And then you realize very quickly that Microsoft Teams is nothing more than the visual representation of a hard drive because Microsoft Teams is built onto SharePoint, is built above SharePoint. So Microsoft Teams is really nothing more than the fact that a team is a hard drive. A channel is a folder in the hard drive. And inside of each channel, the files and folders and stuff like that inside of each channel are the files and folders inside of the folder inside of the hard drive. And once you can kind of conceptualize how all that works, um, it I, I'll tell you, it just pops for me. And so if you take 
my teacher cast, for example, I created a teacher cast team. And inside of that team, I have channels for everything that teacher cast does. I've got a channel for the teacher cast podcast, one for educational podcasting today, one for my Jeff Bradbury show, one for my blog posts. I've got a channel for my presentations. I've got a channel for the business side. I've got a channel for so all the things that I do. I've got a channel for graphics. That's a hard drive folder or all of my bumper images and stuff like that are put. Um, and then through there, it's all just, it's a file structure is all you're building. It's a team just for myself. Nobody else is in there. And so you're thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought Teams was like a communication thing. And, and it is. But you realize that the posts inside of a team really are just sticky notes. So I, I believe that Microsoft Teams could be a good substitute for Google Keep because Google Keep is nothing more than sticky notes that you can maybe do lists and share and you've got tags and things like that. Yes. Um, you can color code them. That's equivalent to the posts section in Microsoft Teams. You know, what you just explained with all of that in the last minute or so was one of the more clear exp explanations that I've heard in comparing and contrasting, contrasting Microsoft Teams versus Classroom versus MyDrive. One note, I, I love that, and I like the explanation and comparing it with Google Keep. That is great. And from what I've seen and just collaborated here with you, that is a great explanation and definitely clarifies things. In each channel, you have posts, you've got files, and then you've got tabs. And the tabs are nothing more than quick links. And you can put your Google stuff in a quick link tab. You can put your files in a quick link tab. Yes. You can put your... Uh, forms in a quick link tab. You can put websites in it. So, you know, it, it even breaks it out. We also have a channel for our tech coach and we've got a, we've got a, you know, a team, I should say for the tech coaches. And in, in there, we've got a channel for this podcast and we've got a channel for tech coach weekly, our new video series. And we've got a channel for the tech coach network and we've got a channel for planning, planning ahead. So one of the applications that Sue and I uses a lot is Microsoft planner. And I love me some Microsoft Planner. We're definitely going to be doing some videos over on the TeacherCast YouTube channel all about that. And I'm going to show you guys how we use Planner to stay organized. And, you know, again, just using all of this as one application. On one hand, Sue, I can say that Teams is nothing more than a visual representation of a hard drive. I can also say that it's the roof. Right, It's the roof that everything is under because inside of Teams, you've got your chat, you've got your files app, you've got your calendar app, you've got your planning app, your tasks app, you've got your OneNote app. Soon, maybe one day you're going to have Outlook is going to be in there, right? Yeah. But Teams is just the roof that everything revolves around. And so it was very easy for me to make up a family team and the channels going through there are for all of my family members. So I've got a channel for my wife, a channel for each of the triplets, and a channel for myself. And then so well, what goes in there? Well, um, you've got, you know, doctor records. You, you got, you know, I've got a list, Microsoft list for all the handy people that walk in. You know, the, the guy who fixes the refrigerator and the air conditioner and the windows and all that good stuff, right? So I have a, a way to record that. Now, I used to use Evernote. And I still do use Evernote for some things. But, you know, I have a team now that it's totally secure, I think, because I'm running in the business side of the Microsoft operating system. So it's got all that all that good Microsoft security on there. But, you know, it's I save my passwords on there. I save my tax information on there it is one little thing. Same thing for my doctorate program. I have a team for my university and I built a, a channel you know, for each of the classes that I'm taking. So the general channel is what you think it is. It's all the, you know, it was all of my um, acceptance letters, my login information, who do I speak to, um, you know, what's the pathway, my courses, my all that stuff. But I have a channel now for each of the classes I'm taking. And so that way at the end, when I am writing that dissertation, everything is going to be all in one spot, all organized. And Sue, the big S word, searchable. Everything about this is going to be searchable because it's going to be in one spot. 
That is awesome stuff. And, you know, I've just learned a lot listening to our conversation here. So I'm sure we have tech coaches out there listening. So let's say we have somebody who's getting ready to make the shift in their district from Google and they brought a tech coach in just like you've spent a year doing. How did you get the buy in? How did you make that shift in your school district? Well, like everything else, you have to show value. Right. And the value for me is time. By doing this, it's going to save you time. And you need to figure out what different parts of Microsoft are going to be useful to you. It's a big system. Even this past week before we went on break, I did a training and I was mentioning all the Microsoft apps. Because, you know, when you say Office, you people think Word, PowerPoint, Excel and Access. Okay. And Outlook, right? Yes. Uh, they don't realize that there's a sway. They don't realize that Flipgrid is done by Microsoft. They don't realize that, you know, you got all these wonderful toys. So you have to show the value. And, and if you are going to be helping a school district make the shift, my advice is to start with the applications that don't need to be shifted. Give you the example. I love Microsoft Sway. We've done a lot of shows on Microsoft Sway. And Microsoft Sway would be a, a equivalent, I would say, to like an Adobe Spark Pages, right. if you would. Long, um, website-y type thing, but dynamic. You can put pictures and videos and content and all the whole bunch of stuff up there. Um, why do I like to start with that? Why would I why did I tell all of my instructional coaches this year start pushing Sway? One, it's a Microsoft product. Two, it teaches people how to adapt to the Microsoft share menus, which is exactly like Google, just looks different. But it doesn't require anybody to use OneDrive. It doesn't require you to have to say, well, wait a minute, I'm doing Google Classroom, but I'm going to be putting things in OneDrive. But how does that relate to a Google Classroom announcement? How do I? But you're using the Microsoft infrastructure. You're starting to learn the language of Microsoft. You're starting to get them in that, oh, well, what else is there? So Sway is one of those gateway uh, applications that I would certainly use. Translator is another one, showing people the power of Microsoft Translator. It's not Google Translate. It is awesomer, if that's a word. Um, and, and there's other things that don't require getting into the hard driviness of Microsoft that, you know, it's the, oh, give me more of that. Right. Another one I keep hearing about that a lot of people don't realize is a Microsoft product is the immersive reader tool that people yes. love in their classroom. So that's another way to, you know, hook your um, coworkers out there if you have to implement this stuff. There's a lot of things that are out there. And again, they really do mesh. Every application from Microsoft either has or will soon have the immersive reader feature. And for those who don't know what that is, it's it's a you'll see a little icon for it. But essentially, it reads the page for you. Yes. But it can read it fast. It can read it slow. It can change language. There's a lot of different things that it can do. And outstanding. Just yes. absolutely outstanding stuff. Yeah, I mean, even a lot of Google districts move over and use the immersive reader just because of the accessibility um, assistance that it provides there for special needs students and such. Absolutely. And show them that there's value here, because if not, you're teaching them a new application that nobody wants to learn any time of the year. So you've definitely been busy this past year, you know, continuing to develop relationships and implementing these new products. So what's been something, you know, as you've implemented this in your district that they've really enjoyed and appreciated learning? I think the language stuff has really sparked. Um, you know, last year when I was teaching middle school, I was using PowerPoint Live, which is a feature of PowerPoint that automatically, again, translates into multiple languages right in front of the student. And to be able to teach and see a student laugh at your sarcasm and that student can't understand a lick of English. That's wow. powerful. That is huge. And even though I was teaching on Google, I still had a Google site on the board. I still had my Google slides. I didn't change anything about my teaching. I just simply grabbed a second device, turned on PowerPoint, and I let it listen to me. And the person, you know, the, the, the student in the room uh, grabbed the code or the QR code or the link or whatever I gave them. And they were, it was a black blank slide but it was coming up in spanish and 
heck, that's better than nothing. And it was awesome. Absolutely. That is huge. So, so definitely, I know Microsoft has come a long way in the language stuff. I keep hearing so many great things about that. So, um, what has been your favorite part of this implementation? I know you've had um, SharePoint experience, creating websites, a lot of different things you've gotten out to parents. What's been something that you've learned and enjoyed through this process? I think the thing that I've enjoyed is watching 1,300 staff members start to wake up isn't the right word, but come alive with this. You know, at the beginning of the year, off. light bulbs going off. Oh, I can see this, right? Um, it, at the beginning of the year, it was, you know, hey, can we use Teams? Can we use Meet? Can we use Zoom? Can we use this? And then, you know, breakout rooms came. And then we started learning about Sways. And then we started learning, about, you know, and, and different pockets started working at different sp spots. Some some administrators picked it up. And then, of course, they said to their, their teachers, we're only doing Teams. We're only doing this. So, you know, we took one small step for a 15,000 person school district. And I'm looking yes. forward to this coming summer. I'm looking forward to this coming school year to see what that next step is going to be. When you make this transition, it shouldn't happen overnight. It should happen over no. the course of time. You need to show value. You need to get buy-in. You need to let them know that it's safe there is no such thing as professional development. There is ongoing learning. Absolutely. You are here to support, right? I'm so happy and so pleased and so thrilled that we've been able to build a digital learning team of seven now. Um, digital learning coaches and a fantastic coordinator to, to help guide this. And I, I love the fact that our team is growing over the summer. We're adding uh, one more coach. And so to be able to put the boots on the ground and, you know, it's not professional development. You, you think of professional development as one hour every month and a half. Right? Kids right. go home and we professionally learn. No, it's continual in-classroom help and support and learning and encouragement. And again, that's what's going on. And for me, it was easy. Um, I need to help lead a school district, so I'm going to learn this. I want to, or and I, I moved. Um, I need to get myself in order. I did it. I'm doing this this school thing. I, I'm using it again. I'm sure there's going to be other things that I'm going to go. Oh, I can I can use Teams for this. Uh, no different. Maybe if you heard some of the earliest Ask the Tech Coach podcast, you know, when it was just Nick and I, and I was saying everything can be a Google site. So I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself with a different application, but it really is the same concepts. Whatever you're comfortable with, get in there, get in there often and have some fun with it. Oh, absolutely. And whether you're, I was just thinking, you know, whether you're implementing Microsoft, implementing Google or a new learning management system, just get in there, do it, develop those relationships, develop that buy-in. That's what you as a tech coach are there for. And then that's what Jeff and I are here to support you and with our tech coach network, you know, if you have questions about anything as you implement something new in your district and you're a new tech coach, don't forget to contact us at on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or through our tech coach network. We would love to help have a discussion and just help collaborate with you. I can't repeat that enough. You know, in the last couple of weeks, Sue, we've had dozens of people sign up through our newsletter, through our Twitter, yes. through all, all that stuff. And I'm looking forward to getting everybody together in the Tech Coach Network this summer. We've got a couple of great things planned out. And obviously going into next year, we're going to start up our meetings again. We're looking forward to having all that stuff. So we want to know what you guys think. Are you guys a Microsoft person? Are you looking into Microsoft? I know right now, if you're interested, the applications are live, uh, well and out for the MIE Expert Program. I know uh, that's something I'm going to be uh, making sure that my application's in. I believe they're due like July 15th or something like that. So there's only like two or three more weeks to go, guys. Don't forget you have that. You can go over to education.microsoft.com and check all that stuff out. And again, don't forget to check out Tech Coach Weekly. Uh, we're going to be recording a lot of great videos on both Google, Microsoft, and all the applications out there as the summertime comes around. You can check them out over at teachercast.net forward slash YouTube. And don't forget to sign up for that and subscribe. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers, and I'd love to see if we can take 15,000 and 
eh, we'll make it a hundred thousand by the end of the year. Who knows, right? Let's go. But uh, we would love to have you guys there. And that kind of wraps up this episode of Ask the Tech Coach. One where we're going to be, one where we've looked back at all the great stuff that we're doing with Microsoft. And who knows? Maybe you guys can be a part of our next episode. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this with everybody. And on behalf of Sue and everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.